uh, higher run, uh, Zawan. Uh, I will do my uh, presentation in uh, English, <laughs> unsurprisingly. Um, so today I will talk about uh, PG Anonymize, uh, which is a new extension I've been uh, working on recently. And the, uh, the goal of this extension is uh, to do like uh, data anonymization for, for Postgres. Uh, so let me introduce myself quickly. Uh, my name is uh, Julien in French, uh, but uh, Julien is easier to pronounce, so feel free to use that. Uh, I've been working with uh, Postgres since uh, uh, 8.3, I think, in uh, 2008. And I've been only using Postgres since because it's a great database. Uh, I've been working as a developer, Postgres developer and DBA over the years, so now I'm a, a Postgres developer. Uh, I, I wrote some other tools for, for Postgres, so HypoPG is uh, an extension to do um, uh, uh, hypothetical or virtual indexes on Postgres. Uh, POA, it's uh, a, a tool to do like a performance uh, monitoring on Postgres and uh, some uh, other tools. Uh, so for today's agenda, uh, first I will uh, uh, quickly introduce uh, PG Anonymize to uh, explain what's uh, its exact uh, scope and uh, goals. Uh, then I will give some uh, uh, explanation on how it works under the hood. Uh, with uh, a lot of uh, implementation details on, uh, both on the uh, Postgres side and on the extension side. So if you're interested in uh, hacking into Postgres or creating your ex own extension, uh, hopefully it can help you to uh, get ahead and, and uh, do that. And uh, finally, uh, I will give some uh, usage on how to uh, effectively do uh, data anonymization uh, with this extension. So PG Anonymize. Uh, so the, the name of the talk is uh, a new extension, but uh, it's uh, explicitly it's uh, a, a module, not an extension. Uh, we tend to uh, use the same word for both, uh, but just, just to be clear what, what the difference, uh, the module is some uh, compiled code into a shared library that you load into the uh, Postgres server to uh, execute like some, uh, some random code uh, you want. The extension part is only when you uh, create extension and that brings up uh, a lot of uh, objects on your database, like a new table, a uh, new row function, or anything. Uh, but for this extension, we don't need to, to store anything uh, on the database, or at least not store anything, a new object, uh, because Postgres uh, has a way to store what we need to, to do the anonymization. Uh, also, some clarification on what exactly is uh, anonymization. So one definition I found is uh, to remove or modify personally identifiable information, or PII. Uh, that's something very uh, popular recently with GDPR and a lot of uh, new uh, regulation. Uh, but obviously, you can use that to for other purposes, like if you want to, uh, I don't know, hide your the salary to do some some, some stuff. Uh, it would work the exact same way, so it, it's not, uh, it doesn't have to be uh, only for PII. And uh, also the resulting uh, of this anonymization, uh, so for PII it means you, you can't use uh, what's left of the information to identify one specific individua indi individual anymore, but hopefully you can still use the information uh, in some way, because you can return null for everything and then everything is anonymized, that you can't do anything of it. So, for instance, if you don't want to do some statistics ba based on the age of uh, some people, uh, one way to uh, anonymize the data is to truncate the birthday to like uh, the, the month, the year, the decade, and then you can still know like uh, if say, the people is like between 13 or 40 years old, something like that, and yet you can't, can't use the birthday to identify the, the person. Uh, so, uh, for PG Anonymize, um, so the scope uh, of uh, the extension is to provide some uh, infrastructure uh, to let you define how you want to anonymize the data. So, say, like, uh, I want to anonymize uh, the birthday with a truncation or something like that. Uh, and uh, it does anonymization for you, but it doesn't do anything more, which means uh, if you need a way to know, like, how to generate a fake name, fake address, or something like that, uh, it's up to you. Uh, but it's usually not really a problem because th there are a lot of uh, tools and libraries to do that. Uh, one example is the uh, Python Faker library. So you can find it on uh, PyPy. 
And uh, since you can use uh, PLPython uh, stored function with Postgres, you can simply uh, import that library and return whatever you need. And uh, it's done in literally like a five lines of code uh, in, uh, in Python. So it's very easy to do. Um, so the goal of the extension is to be uh, robust, safe, and uh, transparent. Uh, robust and safe is because uh, once you properly configure the extension, uh, the users shouldn't have any way to uh, escape the anonymization. And also it's transparent because uh, the user who connects doesn't have anything to do to be anonymized and uh, they have no choice and, and uh, it just they don't even know uh, they are getting fake data. And uh, it's also work with uh, anything you, you want, so dynamic SQL, pgdump, uh, any driver, uh, any client, uh, PSQL, uh, your application, uh, it will work the same uh, without any uh, limitation except uh, one. Uh, you can't modify uh, the data if they are anonymized because uh, obviously you don't want to modify data you can't even read uh, because it would just ruin them. So now let's see how it works under the hood. <coughs> so the general idea of the extension is to uh, intercept uh, the query as they are being executed on the backend side and uh, rewrite them transparently. So for instance, if you do like a select, select, star, select star from person, uh, the extension, what it will do uh, internally will rewrite to this kind of query, which will be like a select star from, and instead of the table, it will replace it with a subquery that does the anonymization. So uh, in all the slides, what I use is uh, uh, return a hard-coded uh, string for a, a phone number, and it's anonymized because we only get like the, the phone code, so you know where the, people, the person is from, but uh, not the real phone number. So uh, if you use this one instead of this one, it returns the exact same uh, set of rows and columns, but uh, you will only see um, the anonymized data. So in order to do that, uh, we use uh, what's called the hooks in uh, Postgres. Um, so Postgres uh, allows uh, any uh, module to uh, inject some uh, uh, custom code at uh, different points in the query uh, workflow or other part of the of, the, of Postgres uh, using those hooks. So when the module is loaded, uh, it simply needs to declare the list of hooks you want to use. And uh, when you do something on Postgres, so in this case when you execute uh, a query, uh, the hook will eventually be called. And at that point, your custom code uh, is executed and uh, it can do uh, whatever you, you want it to do. So the only way to do this rewrite is find a, a hook that allows us uh, to do that. Uh, so let's focus on the uh, query workflow. So, mm, where is so uh, here, so the, this part is on the client side and everything else happens on the, on the back end. So when uh, the client sends uh, a random query string, so here uh, select star from an uh, anonymized table, uh, the first step is uh, the parser. So it takes like a um, text and it returns one or multiple uh, row query objects. So uh, you, can, um, you can feed multiple statements at the same time in, a, in the single query string. So we'll get one uh, query per um, uh, statement. Then for each of these row query objects, uh, there is a parse analysis stage, which is done once per row query, and it will return uh, a query object. Then in if that query uh, uses uh, any relation that uh, uses rules, so it can be either a view or an explicit rule, uh, it will return, uh, go through the rewriter and return one or more uh, query. So um, you can think, for instance, if you uh, declare a rule that does uh, do also, uh, two query will be actually returned and both will be executed. So that's how you can get from one simple uh, query to having multiple query executed uh, by Postgres. Uh, then for each of the queries, uh, the planner is called and uh, the planner will return uh, one plan for uh, each query. Uh, so we can focus on the uh, path analysis uh, step. So the path analysis uh, transforms a row query into a, a query object. 
And uh, this query object contains all the information that uh, the planner uh, will uh, eventually need to do its work. Uh, so for instance, if you do like a select star, what it will do is expand uh, the, the star into the list of each uh, column in the table and uh, other stuff. Uh, one extra step uh, the parse analysis is doing before returning is calling uh, a specific hook, which is called the post parse analyze hook. And uh, we can use this one to do the anonymization because it's early enough in the query processing stage to, uh, to do the transformation we need. Uh, so if you're interested in how it works on the Postgres side, um, uh, the hook is uh, defined in uh, analyze.c uh, file. Uh, so I have multiple ways to call the uh, parse analysis depending on the, num the uh, parameters. So one uh, of the uh, top level entry is uh, parse analyze fixed params. So uh, it uses the parse tree. It calls a transform top level statement. So that's uh, uh, parse analysis stage. It returns a query. And then uh, it checks if a hook is declared. And if the hook is declared, it just calls the hook with a query and uh, two other objects. So the parse state and the jumble state, which is extra context for, for the query. So uh, your hook can do anything it wants with a query, and it will return as is. So obviously, uh, you can do like very bad things. You can corrupt your data and crash Postgres, so you have to be careful. But it's also very powerful, and uh, you can do something like a PG anonymize. Um, so let's focus on a, a query. So it's a, on the code side, in the, it's a C structure, and uh, it contains all the information you need for the planning stage. So you get like the list of fields, the where and the join clauses, and also you get the list of tables. Uh, which is uh, stored in a field called Airtable, which uh, stands for Range Table Entries. And it's a list, it's a Postgres uh, uh, specific structure, and uh, it's been changed recently, and now it's mostly like a, a simple array. So let's see the Range Table Entry. So it's another C structure, and uh, it's used to describe any kind of relation. So uh, a relation is literally anything that returns uh, rows. So it can be uh, um, a plain relation, it can be a subquery, it can also be a join, because once you join two tables, it returns a new relation that gives a new set of, of rows. Um, so uh, here I show the RTE can, which is uh, the, the, the two uh, can I'm interested in the extension. And the range table entry itself, so it stores a lot of uh, fields, so you have the definition is uh, parse nodes.h. Uh, so one thing, it stores the RTE can, so which kind of relation, and then uh, depending on the can, you have different fields that are valued or not, depending on it. So for a plain relation, it gets its OID and its role kind. And for a subquery, the only thing that stores is another query that contains what will be executed. So it's a nested uh, query. So the interesting part here is that uh, whether it's a, a plain table or a subquery, it's the exact same object that's being used. So um, also internally, um, the um, uh, range table entry and the query object doesn't refer to object as name. So if you do like select uh, ID from table, you don't store ID, the string ID and the uh, uh, table name. What you store is uh, a number. So uh, for the columns, you, you store like uh, which um, the attribute number. So like the first column, the second column and so on. And for a table, you don't store its name, but you store its offset in the list of French table entries. So what it means, uh, if we hack the range uh, table entry to change it from a, a query, uh, sorry, a, a relation uh, at E to a subquery, it will work the same, because uh, if you select an anonymous field, it will refer to uh, uh, the first column on the second table in the range table entries. It will work the same, so no nothing is broken. So all we need to do is change this uh, RTE to, to, do the, uh, to use the subquery instead. So how uh, is it done in a, a PG anonymize? Uh, the first step is to uh, generate the uh, anonymized query that return all the fields anonymized or, or, or not. So to do that, uh, we iterate over all the relation attributes. Uh, we're trying to find if there is a security label, so uh, I will give more uh, expansion on that uh, in the third part, but that's how you uh, define the anonymization rules. And um, also, 
do some uh, extra uh, extra care. For instance, if you have an um, inherited or partition table, you inherit uh, whatever uh, analytical rules from the upper table. So you don't have, if you have 1,000 partition, you don't have to specify the same uh, uh, rule uh, 1,000 times. So just easier. And uh, so that's how it's done in uh, PG Anonymize. So you get uh, a first uh, function called, uh, so PGAN is for PG Anonymize get relation suck labels, so it gets all the security labels in, a, in an array. Then uh, it loops over all the attributes. And then uh, if you find uh, a security label for this column, uh, it appends like, uh, the expression and it aliases it as a column name. Um, the alias is actually not required because uh, what we need is a, a column number, not, uh, not a column name. But if there is any problem uh, later on, like uh, for instance your uh, anonymization rule is broken or something, you, you get uh, something more readable, so it's, uh, it's nice to have. And if you don't have a security label, we just uh, put the original uh, attribute name and we do like a simple select from and, and that's it. Once we uh, exit this part, uh, we get like the, the string, the query string we want to use as a subquery. And then using that, uh, we do exactly the same as Postgres uh, would be doing for a normal query, which is uh, we call the parser and we get a row parse tree. Then we do the parse analysis again to get a query. And uh, in case of uh, PG Anonymous, we stop here because we know we don't want to expand any rule. And then uh, since we have the query that we can use as the RTE subquery, we replace it in the original relation RTE. That's, that's how it's done in uh, PG Anonymize. So um, it's a pseudo code because uh, there's different um, uh, code that's used to, to get the exact uh, thing. But let's assume you have the range double entry and the uh, SQL query text. Uh, you call PG parse query. That's the main uh, entry point for the parser in Postgres with a SQL string. We get a, a list of uh, uh, row statements. Since we generated the query, we know there is one and only one uh, statement generated. So we get the initial one as a, a row statement. We call again the parse analysis. We get a subquery, and then we just uh, uh, hack the RTE in place. We change its RTE kind. We change the, we set the uh, subquery with the subquery just generated. Uh, some other stuff to make sure the, the RTE is in uh, the correct state. And that's it. We can just, uh, we're finished, we continue, and uh, now Postgres will return anonymized data instead of the original data. Uh, so as I mentioned, it works because everything is referred by uh, attribute column and position in RTE and not a specific name or, or something. Um, so it works well for a DML query, like uh, select uh, any select statement. Uh, if you do utility command, so for instance, copy command, that's done by uh, uh, explicit copy or uh, PG, PG dump, it's a bit different uh, because uh, it doesn't go through the, the same uh, schema I, I showed before. It's uh, directly executed. But hopefully there is another hook for that. So it's called the process utility hook. So any utility command goes there. So in case of uh, PG Anonymize, there's two kind of statements we want to change, which is uh, copy uh, column name to uh, a CD out or somewhere, or copy and a query. So in both cases, we do the exact same transformation, and we generate the exact uh, same uh, command, which is copy, and uh, the uh, anonymize uh, query string that was generated. So it's internally use the exact same code in a different hook. So now let's see how it's, uh, uh, you can use PG Anonymize to effectively uh, anonymize your data. <coughs> so as I mentioned earlier, it's using a declarative approach using a security label. So the security label is a utility command uh, specific to Postgres that's used to, to store like plain string and affect them to any kind of object. So uh, in order to um, declare a security label, you need a security provider, uh, which is uh, done uh, by PG Anonymize once uh, it's loaded. So the first step you need to do is uh, make sure uh, PG Anonymize is loaded. So usually you don't want to load, load it for everyone because it will uh, add some overhead you don't want if your uh, user is not anonymized. So 
just do it for the, the, the role that will later be anonymized and for the one you use to declare the security level. So when it's loaded, uh, you declare uh, one anonymization rule for each column you want to anonymize, each column of if tables, each tables. Then you uh, use a security level for each role you want to uh, see anonymized data. And then you want to make sure that uh, PG anonymize is loaded for all those roles. And once it's done, uh, I it's, it's ready to, uh, to anonymize data. So um, to load PG anonymize, you can simply use a load, which is another utility uh, statement. Uh, you need to be super user for that. Um, but uh, if, if this is a problem, uh, you can find a GIF non super user a way to do it if needed. But usually, you don't want uh, a non privileged user to declare anonymization rule because it's uh, security sensitive. Uh, then uh, you declare the anonymization rules. So the syntax of security label is security label for uh, the security provider. So for PG anonymize, it's PG anonymize. Uh, you can have multiple security uh, provider loaded at the same time. For instance, there is uh, SC PG SQL, uh, which also relies on security label and can have both loaded at the same time and they work together without uh, any problem. Then you s use on and uh, uh, a kind of object you want to store it on. So here it's on a column. Then you specify which column you want to use and you use is and you put a, a simple string uh, to describe uh, how you want to anonymize your data. So here that's how you have to be creative to do the uh, anonymization part. Um, it's uh, a good idea to use uh, dollar coding. So it's you use dollar dollar or dollar something dollar uh, instead of a simple quote. Uh, it works the same, but if you do that, you can then use a simple quote uh, inside your expression without having to escape uh, or double quote them. So here, um, the expression itself is like simple quote uh, plus 886 and everything. And that's um, a, a, a naive way to anonymize a phone number. You also have to make sure you return the correct data type. So here, I use semicolon, semicolon text to explicitly cast it as a text. Uh, if you don't use the correct uh, data type, PG anonymize will uh, uh, return an error because it, it sh uh, checks it. Then you do exactly the same, but for the role. And uh, the uh, rule, um, like the label you store, it just anonymize. Uh, and then you modify session preload libraries for the user. So here it's uh, for the Alice user. So you also modify the um, session preload libraries for this uh, user to, to load this extension. So it's alter role Alice set uh, session problem libraries and you set it to PG anonymized and you can have a multiple uh, like um, column separated uh, list of module you want to uh, to automatically load so be careful uh, this is only applied at the connection start so if Alice is already connected somewhere uh, this connection will uh, not have PG anonymized loaded and will continue to see the original data uh, but you can do like a select PG terminate backend and, and close all existing uh, connections and uh, what's in it's done, so here as an example, uh, if I connect using uh, PSQL and the user Postgres, and I do like select star from public.person, I see the original data. And if I connect as an Alice user, uh, now I see the uh, anonymized data. So it will work exactly the same way with uh, any client, any driver. Uh, it will work with dynamic SQL, pgdump, and uh, anything you want to use. Um, th there's really no, uh, no restrictions. Uh, so what is already handled, so it's a work in progress, the extension is not finished yet, but uh, soon to be finished. What's already done is, uh, the, as I mentioned, the inheritance of the rules. If you have a partition table or uh, inherited table, you will uh, uh, inherit what's uh, declared on the upper partitions. So you, you don't need to uh, specify them like a thousand times. Uh, and a lot of sanity checks. So it checks that uh, uh, it returns the correct uh, data type, otherwise it returns an error. It also checks that the anonymization rule doesn't have any uh, SQL injection. Uh, it's easy to do because since we use the Postgres parser, we just have to check how many uh, uh, row query uh, are returned. If it's more than one, we know there was, uh, for some reason, the, the rule returned two queries and then it's an injection. So also it will uh, return an error there. And also, it checks that the anonymization rule itself doesn't try to write any, uh, any data. 
Uh, so the next uh, step that uh, should be done, so it's uh, already work in progress. Uh, it's not finished yet, but uh, soon. So a lot more sanity checks. Um, do the exact same uh, sanity checks I mentioned here, uh, but uh, those are already done uh, at the definition time. So we want to do that at the at runtime because uh, you can still alter uh, a column data type, and, and then we want to make sure that uh, the new data type is the same as the anonymization rule. And uh, also correctly handle rules because those are uh, handled a bit uh, differently than a, a simple query. Uh, if you remember, uh, it's done at, uh, after the post-pass analyze uh, stage. So we just have to find a hook to also uh, anonymize those. Okay. So that's uh, all for, for today. So if you're interested in the extension, you can find it on uh, GitHub. And uh, if you have uh, any question, uh, I will be uh, happy to answer. Thank you. What is your motivation to create this extension? Oh, uh, it's because uh, I'm from Europe. Ah. And in Europe, uh, it's GDPR. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, GDPR is very, very uh, a hot topic right now. Like uh, I I Every company has to comply with it. And uh, a lot of customers are asking for a way to anonymize data because they need it for uh, uh, regulation. There is similar regulation in, in the US. I work from an uh, American company and they have the same uh, kind of uh, problem. So uh, there are other extensions that uh, try to do uh, anonymization, but uh, they have some uh, uh, limitations. So I wanted to have like a, a simple tool that does just anonymization, but does it, uh, does it well. So that's why I, I created this extension. Julian, your your approach is very clever. So, but 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 I'm not quite understand the the difference between extension and module. So, uh, for instance, do you know uh, auto explain? Yeah. So auto explain is also only a module because uh, once it's loaded, it does its work, which is like a, a automatic automatically does a, a, an ex output an explain plan at the end of the query execution. But you don't need to do uh, anything on the SQL side. You don't need to do like uh, alter table, set auto explain enable or something. You just need the code to run. So that's, that's the module part. The extension is to bring new object. For instance, if, uh, do you know PG stat statements? Yeah, it's uh, uh, a visual computation. Yeah. So PG stat statements, you have a module because it's uh, gather statistics, uh, accumulated metrics on uh, query runtime, number of suggestion and everything. So it's done automatically by the module, and you need uh, SQL object to access those data which are in shared, uh, shared memory. So that's why the extension is for. It's, uh, so if, I, if I want to use the MMI, I need to compile the MMI to compile with my whole graph. Yeah. Oh, but usually it will end up in a PG, a PG APT or PG uh, YUM. So you can just do like uh, apt install pg anonymize or yum dnf install uh, pg anonymize and you get the uh, binary. Uh, but there is like a whole network of uh, extension and you, you can find it on the pgdg uh, repository. So they are already compiled for you. It's just um, answer like different parts, uh, different problems. Uh, for instance, if you need a, a new data type, uh, you need it to be uh, accessible on the SQL level. So you need an extension for that. Uh, if you just need to have like code running in the backend, like PG Anonymize, you need a module, but that's not something you, you choose because you think it's better. It's because that's uh, the way to implement it has to be an, exten an extension or on a module or both. So it's, it really depends on what you need to do. If you need like custom C code, uh, uh, it's a module. If you need uh, something at the SQL level, uh, it's extension. I, I have, I have a problem. Uh, 
when, when you use this, uh, I, um, I, I query uh, anonymized data, where it uses uh, indices on, on the table. Oh, uh, uh, what will happen if you have an index on anonymized data? Uh, it uh, won't use, like, you can't use the index uh, to, to see the original data because uh, since it's replaced the query you, you're using, you're not doing select star from anonymized table. You say select star from select something. So even if you do like where anonymized data is one, uh, the one will refer to the anonymized column. So, so uh, Postgres don't even try to use the index for that because uh, it's a plain expression and not uh, an original field. So, so it's, it won't use an index because uh, uh, it doesn't see the data, but it, it also won't see the original data. Mm, sorry? Mm -hmm. so oh yeah, mm. uh, you can yeah you, you can create an expression index, uh, but you have to make sure it's synchronized with what's actually actually uh, uh, the anonymization rule. Uh, yeah, that that's also brings uh, uh, another point. It's like uh, when you use this extension, it's way slower than accessing the original data, because. Uh, Uh, here, if you do like select uh, one column from from table, it will still return all the columns. So uh, it, it will. Um, it may be possible to try to know which column you try to use, but it will be a lot of code and it will be more fragile. So uh, the point of the extension is to be uh, safe and robust, not to be super fast, because uh, I don't think anyone want to do like OLTP uh, uh, workload on, on anonymized data. So. It's slow. Uh, it can be optimized, but uh, the, the first rule is to be robust and correct, not not uh, performance-wise. Oh, no, no, we this just to here. Thank you. Okay, thank you.